Chris Martin here with FreeFX Tutorials and today we're going to do a really cool tracking tutorial with some Art Beats footage that I think is going to be a lot of fun. So let me just show you the footage that we're going to start out with here. So here is the footage on Art Beats. So we've got this baseball field and we've got a plane or helicopter flying overhead. All right, so you kind of get an idea of what we've got. And this is what we're going to end up with. Let me just play that for you. All right, pretty cool, huh? One more time. Okay, so let's see how we did that. Now the first thing that I did was to take the footage and sort of fix it up a little bit. I cropped it and it was 1920 by 1080. I exported it as an image sequence and I exported it at 1280 by 720. So let's go ahead and just drag that into our new comp. And there we go. This is what we ended up with. Now the first thing I need to do here is go ahead and track this footage. So I'm going to go to the track camera. It's off screen right now, but it's down here. And I am using After Effects Creative Cloud. So I hope you're using the newest version. Now this is going to go ahead and analyze in the background. It's going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so we're back and our footage is tracked. If we scrub through there we can see that the points seem to be sticking pretty well. We can go to the advanced tab and see that we have a 0.39 pixel average error. That's pretty good. Anything less than 0.5 seems to work really well. Now if you hover over these you can see that it creates this little target area and it's basically telling you or giving you a place that it can put down different objects including 3D origin points and nulls. So let's go ahead and create some of those. Now my target right now is kind of big so I'm going to come over here to the target size and I'm just going to drag that down a little bit so that we have a more manageable size target. And instead of just picking one of these I'm going to loop select or lasso select a whole bunch of these around here like that. Then I'm going to right click in the middle and I'm going to say set ground plane and origin. So what that's going to do when we get over to our 3D program, any 3D objects that we drop into the scene is going to be dropped right here. If we would have created that over here, the objects would have been dropped over there. So this basically just creates your 0, 0, 0 point in your 3D world. Also going to right click and click on create shadow catcher, camera and light because we're going to want to use that over in Cinema 4D. And then I'll click off of here and maybe click a couple of these and say Create Null. Never know when you're going to need these. So I've got three nulls here in the scene. And I'm going to go ahead and save. Let's go ahead and jump on over to Cinema 4D and we'll just open up that file. Actually, we need to save that file first. So let's go to export, Maxon Cinema 4D exporter. We're going to call this 4, Baseball 4. Click Save. Now we can go over to Cinema and we can open that file up. There we go. Click Open. And now you see that we have these that came in. So we've got our shadow catcher right here and the three nulls that we created plus our camera. If we click out of the camera and just pull out here, drag through the timeline, you can see that the camera, the virtual camera, is doing the same move that the real camera was. All right, so that's pretty awesome. I'm going to go ahead and change the color of this. I just like to darken these shadow catchers up a little bit. Alright, 
Let's go ahead and get back into our 3D camera by clicking this little icon here. I'm going to double click to create a new material, then double click the material to open it up. I'm going to click off of specular, click on color, click here, and I want to load in my baseball field footage. I'll click open. I'll say no. Click in here, go to animation, and then calculate, and this will calculate the start and end frames. Next thing I want to do is put a background object in here, and then put my footage on the background. So now if we click on the shadow catcher and click on x-ray mode so that we can see through it, we can see that we have something very similar to what we had over in After Effects. All right. Now for the spaceship, I created a very simple model. And this tutorial is not really for modeling, but just to let you know how I created this, I created a sphere. And let me just pull this out here. Basically converted it, made it editable and then squished it down went into polygon mode here did a few loop selects and did some extrusions and took these and put these into hypernerves and that's kinda how I started building that now the retractable landing gear that was done with point level animation which is right here so if you want to play around with doing some modeling by all means do that but we're gonna go ahead and take the model that we've already done just copy that go back to our original scene I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in here and then I'm gonna take this null and I'm gonna attach it to one of my track nulls and then I'll take the null go to coordinates tab and zero that out and actually what I should do is probably take this off of here and zero the ship out let me see which null I want to use let's use the let's use this null We'll zero this out. Let's go over here to our side view and just pull this up. So our shadow catcher is right there. Let's go ahead and pull up the ship till it sits on top of the shadow catcher. Something like that. Now we go back over here in our scene and it looks like we're pretty well set there. Let me just adjust that a little bit. Now we can take this out from underneath the null. So in Cinema 4D a good way to zero out your point is if you have a object in a certain place and you want another object to share that same place you can just put it underneath it and then go to the coordinates and zero the X, Y, and Z out and then it will take on the position of its parent. All right. All right, great. Now I'm going to go ahead and select that ship again, Alt G, to group it into a new null. I'm going to get rid of this null. Now let's just scrub through our timeline and make sure everything is sticking and it looks like it is. All right, that looks good. Let's go ahead and save that. Let me go over here to the content browser. I'm just going to pick a material, any material and just put that on my ship and I'm going to control click and drag to duplicate that also I need to come up here to my settings and I'm going to turn on multi-pass I'm going to put some ambient occlusion in the scene and turn the contrast up to 10 percent I'm going to grab an object buffer which we haven't put in the scene yet but we will in a minute a shadow pass 
and let's put the ambient occlusion pass in there. All right. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Let's select the ship. Or actually, we can select the null. Right click, go to Cinema 4D Tags, Compositing Tag, and turn on this object buffer because we need to separate the ship from the shadow catcher, and we'll do that in Cinema 4D. Last thing I want to do is go ahead and put in a physical sky. Click Save. Let's go ahead and do a quick render. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Let's go on and run back over to After Effects. Let's double click on here and grab our file. We'll import that. Let's just drag that into the scene. And let me go ahead and turn on Draft Mode for the renderer. Doing a little calculating here. Let's fit. Go back to the beginning. And that's looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and turn on the multi pass for this and define multi passes. So, what I need to do now is add the image layers, and that's going to duplicate my Cineware plugin. And it's going to include the ambient occlusion and the shadow passes plus an RGBA pass. So if I click on Add Image Layers, you can see that those have been brought in and the blending modes have been turned on accordingly. So there is my object buffer. So if I just come over here, click on, I'm sorry, I don't need to click on there. I need to click here and choose Luma Matte make sure and turn this on and it's calculating there we go so we've got it in there and we can see our shadow now let's take the shadow pass and drag it underneath make sure multiply mode is on and for the ambient occlusion can't really see that and that's because of the mode that we're in so we need to go to final mode for ambient occlusion to work that'll take a second it takes a little longer when you're working in final. This should really just be the last place that you end up before you go to render. Uh, we can turn that on and off and you can see that ambient occlusion and how that's affecting everything. Okay, so it's a good time to save. Now let's run back on over to Cinema 4D. I'm going to turn off the physical sky for the moment. And basically what I did from here was I selected my ship and went to Cinema 4D Tags and I went and put a Vibrate tag on there. Now, you can just play around with this, but I basically waited until the legs started to move up and then I enabled my Vibrate tag. So, if I go to Basic Tags and uncheck Enable and click on here, my Command or Control click on there to set a keyframe and then maybe go one frame over, turn that on, and enable that. That turns my Vibrate tag on and off. Now we can take a look at the parameters of the Vibrate tag. So I enabled Position and Rotation. I turned these to 10, 10, and 10 with a frequency of 1. And I turned the Rotation to 5, five and five with a frequency of one. So let's go ahead and go back to the beginning and we can see that turns on and then we start getting a little movement here in the ship. Now if you want to change these and make these a little more drastic by all means go ahead. After that, it was simply coming over and animating the null, so the position of the null. So you can just create some keyframes here for your position and your rotation. And maybe pull this forward and go to the top. 
but you can see these and just kind of play around with it and set your keyframes again and this just takes a little bit of playing so if we go back to the beginning now you can see what we've got alright so that's kind of moving forward did a little rotation there and let's say we'll put another keyframe here select all these put a keyframe select these put a keyframe go forward maybe 20 or 30 frames and just take this off screen go ahead and set another keyframe and set another keyframe let's go back to the beginning and we kind of get the spaceship retracting the legs and taking off all right so once you've got it done the way you want it and you've got it animated the way you want it be sure and save and then we can go back into After Effects and this is going to update now we notice that we don't have our shadow here so we need to go back and turn that on here so we'll turn our physical sky back on then file save go back to After Effects and this will update like so and then the last thing you want to do is just go ahead and turn all of these on to final because right now the only one that we have on final is the ambient occlusion so you want to go turn all of your other ones to final so I'll go ahead and change these to final and we'll take a look at that as soon as it finishes updating okay so here's everything with final turned on so it looks pretty nice and at this point all I did was to create an adjustment layer put a little contrast in here enable motion blur and that was about it so here is the finished piece again okay I hope you enjoyed that I'm Chris Martin with free effects tutorials and doing this tutorial for art beats today hope you enjoyed it thanks